Hi there, you're listening to the Bigfoot Society Podcast, and I'm Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to individuals who have experienced Sasquatch in some way or another, so you won't want to miss an episode. Make sure you're subscribed on the platform that you're listening to, and share this episode with a friend. It does not cost a thing, and it helps the show continue to grow. If you'd like to hear Bigfoot Society episodes early and ad-free, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter or a YouTube channel member. Links to those are in the show notes. In Bigfoot Society, I've taken far too much of your time so far, so let's get on with the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, we've got the privilege of talking to a listener tonight. His name is Kel. He reached out uh, with some very interesting uh, things that have happened uh, over the years in different parts of the U.S. So excited to talk to Kel tonight. How's it going today, sir? Oh, doing well. How are you? Oh, I'm I'm doing great. Having a having a good day out in central Iowa, and uh, you know it's it's starting to get a little cooler out here, but we're still doing good and we're getting into the fall season. So I uh, can't complain. How are things out where you're at? Oh yeah, same here. I'm in South Dakota right now. And so, um, I mean, it's starting to, starting to turn the wind had a, kind of a nip to it today is the first time, um, <clears throat> since the fall began. So now that's, that's weird because Believe it or not, I just talked to a gentleman from South Dakota last night. He had some really interesting things he shared. So that's kind of a interesting synchronicity there that be talking to two South Dakota gentlemen uh, yeah. nightly, it, you know, two nights in a row. But who knows? Uh, but yeah, uh, I'd say uh, let's let's jump right into it, Kel. And uh, you've got some very interesting things to share. So I'll let you uh, take it away. And I might uh, might throw in some questions as we go along. But let's see where we go. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, um, so I'm 43 right now, and uh, I've had some interesting things happening to me over the course of my life. Um, I was. Uh, born and raised in Washington state, mostly <clears throat> we moved out to South Dakota here a couple of years ago. But, um, so, um, I had a few things happen, uh, while we lived in Washington, <clears throat> maybe, um, so like the first one was, I think I was probably five or six and, um, we were up at our, my grandparents' cabin. And when I would go up there, I'd kind of just run off and go play in the woods by myself. And believe it or not, there was some streams that would run through the woods and stuff. And, and, um, you know, I think a heavy rain would come through and then the stream would like fill up and then, you know, the rain would stop and then it eventually would, um, would, uh, you know, kind of drain out, but I would run across these areas that had like little dead fish in them and stuff. So, you know, I just learned how to clean fish. So I was down there, um, practicing cleaning a, you know, a, a little tiny fish. I was a little kid, so, you know, I could still do it with my smaller hands, but, um, so I was doing that. And then I remember, um, it's like, I heard kind of a noise or something behind me. And then I turned to look and, um, you know, it, <clears throat> I mean, I don't remember it vividly, but I remember seeing like a big dark shape and, um, I mean, remembering back and kind of feeling the situation again, to me, it felt almost like a, a female or a grandmotherly thing, but I don't remember like seeing, oh, you know, I mean, it could have been, it had hair all over it and stuff. I just remember kind of a dark shape and stuff. And I didn't really have the feeling of danger, but I knew I needed to go back to the cabin. And so, um, I did that. And then, um, I just kind of remember, I don't really remember telling anybody, but I do remember my aunt saying, you know, saying Bigfoot like that, or, you know, in some kind of funny way. And so, and I had never heard that term before or even knew what it was. I mean, this was back in like 86 or 87 or something like that when people weren't really talking about this stuff. So, um, anyway, that was kind of an interesting thing. Um, so, uh, kind of the next one I remember 
uh, I think I was about 10 or 11 and, um, oh yeah, the, uh, the other one I just said that was up in, uh, I think it's up in Echo Valley up by Enumclaw, Washington. Um, so that's where the cabin was, I believe, it, um, up by Enumclaw. Uh, anyway, so the next one, um, believe it or not, it was at Merlin Dam Park and people will go swimming there. And then it was like a, a, a river or something that was dammed up and turned into a lake. And there was kind of a big field there and it's a play set and some picnic areas and stuff. And I was there with my mom and my sister and we had gone swimming and it was kind of, I think it was probably later in the day, maybe early evening, like five or five 30. We we're sitting on the sand eating something. And um, I was just sitting there looking at the lake and I kind of got this, weird feeling or something and I turned and looked and I looked across the field to the edge of the forest and and it was basic it's basically a patch of trees that was between the field and it goes uphill pretty steeply and then there's a road above there. So it's not a very thick patch of forest at all. But I just remember looking there and I saw um it was it was like a basically a Bigfoot type creature. But the face on it was very strange looking. To me, it was like the the jaw was and like the upper and lower jaw were more protruding out, while the nose was still kind of flat on the face, and um, and the cheekbones were super pronounced. I'd never seen the picture like that before, and I just remember the face being super shiny. It was like in um, in the sunlight kind of on the edge of the trees and it was sitting there it seemed like it was doing something with its hands kind of in its lap or down by its knees or something i couldn't really tell but i was looking at it and i got a really kind of weird feeling so i looked away and i looked back real quick and the thing was no longer out in the open it was up behind a tree and peeking around the tree and and then i did it again i kind of looked away and looked back real quick and it was uphill from the second spot it was behind the tree, uphill further from that and behind a different tree looking. And then I just kind of like, you know, was going, oh, man, you know, <laughs> what the heck's going on? You know, and so I just kind of like blew it off. But I don't know. It's, uh, that one is is that's really interesting. The details that you remember from from that one. Um did it almost feel like, you know, just, I've never heard a face, a facial description like that before. Did it almost feel like maybe it was yeah. an, an injured creature or just, that's just so interesting to hear that. You know, I, I don't, I don't think it was injured per se. Um, to me, like the size of it, it wasn't super big. It was, to me, it would be more like a juvenile type. Um but I almost think it might've been like mentally um, impaired in some way. And that, that, you know, or it had like a physical deformation that also was part of its, you know, mental deformation or something like that. Cause it, it almost is reminiscent of, of people that kind of have that. I don't know. I just remember when I was a kid, there was another kid in the school and his, his kind of, his upper and lower jaw kind of stuck out a little bit more than, than uh, regular people. And he was, you know, slow and stuff like that. But I mean, the, the pronouncement on the one, the Bigfoot creature that I saw was, was not slight. It seemed like it was a very, I mean, I don't even want to guess on the, on the length, but um, yeah, anyways, it's, it's just very, very strange. And so, um, and I, I haven't seen a picture like that, or like you said, heard anybody else talk about that, but that was, uh, something that I remember. And, um, I think it kind of led, lent to the overall strangeness of the entire, uh, occurrence because it was just so strange looking to me. And, you know, obviously seeing something like that is just kind of disconcerting as well, but <laughs> Anywhere. And you were the only one that that saw that creature at that time. I believe so. I mean, I don't think my. I mean, my mom and my sister were sitting right next to me, 
And um, I wasn't about to say, oh, hey, look at that, you know, and they'd turn around and it'd be gone. And then they'd go, well, what? And then, you know how it goes, right? (laughs) Oh, yeah, I saw this. Oh, yeah, sure you did. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. So, Um, you know, I just just didn't even want to mess with it, really. For context for listeners, so the area Woodland or Woodland, this is just uh, this is north of Vancouver before you get up to Longview, and it's across the river uh, from well, not exactly Rainier, but it's, listeners will be familiar with Rainier, Oregon, from the episode where I talked to the gentleman who had uh, the four-year standoff in I believe it was the late seventies. Um, but that's right. the area that we are dealing with right now. So just wanted to throw that in for context real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Woodland is probably about a half hour Southeast of, of Rainier. If you go through Longview, um, somewhere in there, but yeah. So, um, so the, uh, I mean, another one, this one was in Longview and, um, it's probably, I was around the same age and, um, we kind of lived up, um, out of town up in the Hills and they basically the Cascade foothills. And, um, you know, for people that don't know the Hills there are essentially a thousand feet above the Valley floor is the elevation to them. And they're, they're fairly gentle slopes and stuff like that for the most part. So, you know, they cover a, a decent area on the way up there so i mean we'd have to it'd take like 15 minutes to get to our house from town just going winding up through the hill but anyways um and right next to and this was the the home that i grew up in and right next to our property there was a uh, an open field and uh i mean we had a kind of a a little bit of a forest in our yard too but so i'd, I'd be playing around there in the forest and then uh a lot of times i'd just walk across the field and you could go across the field and then there was like it was like almost an old logging road but i think it was more like an access that somebody made so they could drive a a truck down there or something and then it kind of dead ended at a a kind of a cliff a small cliff and i I mean i went back there a bunch of times and i go down the cliff and go exploring down there but i just remember one time um going going over there and this time i i didn't see anything per se but i felt kind of a a sense of urgency maybe even danger and um i was just kind of going you know taking a pause going well what's going on with that and then i heard like a bipedal footsteps like a couple three steps in the dry leaves probably i'm estimating probably about 20 25 feet away but it was on the other side of like a bunch of these little um saplings that kind of created a a hedgerow of sorts and um so i heard that i was you know what the heck's going on so and there were still some leaves on the saplings so i kind of looked but if you kind of look down low you could see past them you know, because there's no leaves down low on them. And I looked down there and I, you know, I saw one of the bigger trees on the other side, but I didn't see anything. But it was just, uh, it was very weird. And so, uh, I mean, I was so kind of weirded out by the whole thing. I never went back to that that area, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, so for whatever reason, it, it kind of, I don't know, spooked me or something. but. Um, and real, real quick. So what, what, um, mm-hmm. what year around was that, that you had that long view experience again? Um, I was about, I estimate between 10 and 12 or something like that. So that would have been, um, you know, probably 89 to 90, 91, maybe somewhere in there. It's kind of a long shot, but just in case, um, being around the Longview area, did you ever hear of any weird stuff happening uh, across the Columbia River over in Rainier? Uh, anything like that? No. Um, you know, back then, I mean, people really didn't talk much about any of this stuff, at mm. least any of the people I knew. And um, 
interestingly enough, that show that you talked about was the first show of yours that I heard recently. And um, I was, <laughs> I was almost a little bit peeved because, you know, I would have been nice to know when I lived over there, I could go <laughs> talk to him or something and see what, what's going on over there. But yeah, I mean, at the time we, I mean, at the time, man, like nobody talked about Bigfoot other than like, kind of like scoffing and stuff like that. And, and it really wasn't as big of a topic as it is now. You know, I mean, there's so many TV shows and stuff now. People are comfortable to talk about it. But, you know, back then, talking about Bigfoot was probably even weirder than talking about ghosts or something. Oh, but, absolutely. I mean, I would agree that yeah. only in the last, uh, well, I, I think finding Bigfoot helped out a lot with making it a more culturally acceptable thing to talk about. And then probably the rise of uh, podcasts such as especially Sasquatch Chronicles helped out a lot with that as well. But uh, yeah, that that episode is pretty wild. And um, I will say a little spoiler, there could be more to come from that story. So keep an ear out for that. But that's definitely one of the more uh, popular stories that's getting around right now from the podcast. But um, yeah, I, I know that there's bound to be someone else that reaches out to me from that area and that time period that can mm -hmm. also have stories as well. But um, moving on, uh, you had a little, a little gap in the storyline um, and you had to wait a little bit later in life before you saw your, uh, you had your next encounter. Yes, sir. Yep. And, um, so the next one, um, I remember was, uh, I, I, I think it was around 2006 and 2007. So I would have been, um, you know, in the mid twenties. So I was born in 79, but, um, anyways, yeah, we're, so we are up in the Mount Rainier foothills and funny enough, there's a, uh, there's a terrain feature there called Gobbler's Knob, which when we, we didn't know about it when we went up there, but when we saw the sign, we had a good laugh about that one because it's such a funny name. But <clears throat> yeah, anyways, we went up up in that area. And at, um, at the time, there was kind of some older cabins up there. And um, the one that we ended up staying in was a uh, like a little three-sided cabin. And... Um, and when we got there, I pitched my tent inside that cabin, and then my uh, other buddies pitched their tent outside there, you know, just for whatever reason. And, uh, you know, so we went hiking on that first day and stuff like that, went up to the so-called Gobbler's Knob and <laughs> uh, just, you know, walked around and stuff like that. First night, didn't really hear nothing or see nothing. Um, the, the second night, though, they... Um, packed their stuff up and uh, we all slept in my tent inside the cabin. And so um, I'm, I kind of don't sleep very good or I, I didn't sleep very well back then, but uh, so I was kind of just laying there listening to the forest and stuff like that. And, and I could hear um, since we're kind of in that cabin and, and there was no front wall on it or anything, I was just laying down. I could hear mice running around on the wood kind of right by my head, but outside the tent inside the cabin and just kind of listening to that and stuff like that. And, um, you know, just trying to go to sleep. And then I started hearing something that to me sounded exactly like one of those giant drums they have in a marching band. And it was beating at a very steady rhythm going boom, boom, boom like that and i was thinking like what the heck is going on i mean because you know i think we we hiked up like seven maybe five or seven miles to get up there it's pitch dark you know there's nobody there's nobody walking through the woods definitely not beating a drum or anything right i mean just the strangest thing <clears throat> and it seemed like it was like getting louder you know and Man, I can't really remember how long I was listening to it for because, you know, it's the middle of the night. I didn't I wasn't watching the clock or anything like that. But I mean, you could kind of hear it get closer, closer. And of course, as the noise got closer, it would get louder and stuff. And then, you know, it got when it got loud enough that you could you could 
hear that, oh, okay, you know, now it's getting close. Since I was laying on the ground inside, you know, the cabin was on the ground, I was in the cabin, I could feel the ground shake every time that drum sound would hit. And then I was really kind of going, what the heck's going on? You know, I mean, I'd seen Jurassic Park as a little kid and stuff or a younger kid. And, and you see, and you're, you know, you remember the, the water shaking when the T-Rex is stomping along. And I was just, I wasn't like scared or nothing, but it was just kind of baffling really like, cause it's such something that you would never expect. It seems totally out of place, but um, and so when it was happening, I just kind of made like a little or something like that noise to see what would happen. And it got completely silent. There's no, I mean, while this thing was moving, you know, presumably it was, a, it was, to me, it was definitely bipedal because you could, you could just hear the, the only the two footsteps, um, but it got totally silent. There wasn't a stick break in not a leaf rustling, nothing. <clears throat> and it, I kind of had a sense that there was something standing right in front of the opening to the cabin, you know, um, you know, for whatever reason, like, like, it's almost like, um, you know, if you could feel somebody looking at you and then you look over and you see somebody staring at you, right. It's, uh, it's almost something like that, but you know, it was totally pitch dark. I, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face or nothing. Um, but anyway, so, I mean, it was silent for, I don't know, a minute or two or something, you know, it wasn't a super long time, but when you're kind of sitting there in the dark, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time, but anyway, so, you know, after that, then I heard that noise and that thumping walking away, um, kind of back behind me and to my right and the noise started in front of me and to my left as I was laying down with my feet pointed towards the opening and so to me it was like whatever it was was on a beeline and it just continued on that same line you know um and it you know it I guess I interrupted it or whatever and then it just continued on the line after it decided to keep going so that was pretty much that encounter, but I mean, I don't know what else it could have been, you know, I mean, it seemed totally bipedal to me. I didn't hear any sticks breaking or anything like that. It was just that thumping. And then when it got close, man, it was shaking the ground. And so, um, just very weird. It makes, I mean, man, it, it sounded like you were very far away from civilization you had to hike in multiple miles and i'm just been trying to think while you've been talking what else it could be and i'm not yeah. coming up with any options yeah I, I don't know i know i'd be freaked out along with you yeah. i know i mean i wasn't i mean the thing is man it's almost it's almost like I'm too dumb to be scared at that point because I was just so baffled. It just seemed so out of place. You know, obviously if that was a Bigfoot, then I was the one out of place, but you know, it's, it's stuff that's just totally unexpected. It kind of throws your brain for a loop and you don't know what to do, you know, but anyway. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, you know, who, who knows how you're going to react in a situation like that for sure. Your next one, however, it's a little bit, I've, I've been interested to hear, uh, this next one, uh, you're the same age, but, uh, you had some, an interesting sighting of, of something. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, this one, I was camping with seeing two guys. And this one, we were headed up to Packwood Lake up by Packwood, Washington. <clears throat> so you could find that on Google. And um, to get up there, you kind of go up some, I think it's basically a paved logging road. And you get to a, a, a parking parking area. And then I believe the, the hike out 
to the lake is about five miles again, something like that. And so anyways, we kind of get there. We start heading up and stuff like that. And um, I mean, we're just walking along and, you know, my one friend likes talking a lot. And so I just kind of hung back a little bit because, you know, he, I'm kind of out there to kind of get away from things and everything. But so I'm just walking along and, you know, I mean, they're kind of up, up ahead of me and stuff like that. I'm not too far away. I could probably maybe still hear him a little bit, but so I'm just bebopping along and you know i'm i'm walking along the trail and to my left it goes downhill and to my right it goes uphill and um and i just i start hearing this thumping like um like a thump 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 like that and it was like um you know i didn't think of it as footsteps first but it sounded like something that maybe thumping on ground that wasn't totally solid or maybe there's a hollow log or something underground because it the way that it was resonating was kind of weird and anyway so i turned and it was uphill for me so i turn and look uphill and like i just you know a very quick glance i see what I, appears to be two again bigfoot type beings only this time they're very light in color and like their faces, like I describe it as being like a rock troll. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's almost like, um, I don't know if they had sand on their face or the, just the type of coloration their face was. There's no hair on their face. It was like, um, you know, from the forehead down below the chin was, was there's no hair at all. And they're just very weird menacing looks you know and i mean i kind of looked up there and as soon as i registered that in my brain i just kind of just tried to ignore what was going on and just kind of walk a little bit faster and caught up with my buddies and um you know i didn't say nothing to them i i didn't say nothing to them about the other thing either just it's kind of the same type of deal you know they didn't really ever talk about it and so i didn't either um so then we go we we pick a campsite along the lake and um this campsite was interesting um so you know as you're kind of walking up to it the campsite is kind of down and to the right and then probably a good you know 40 yards from the trail down to the lake so there's a lot of area in there and then to the left of the trail there's like a pit toilet there um with in a little three-sided building and um you know so we get set up there and, and start looking around for firewood because you know we're gonna make a fire and stuff that night and um i see this pile of brush kind of behind the behind the pit toilet you know and it has some decent sized limbs and stuff like that and so i go up there and i start snapping these limbs you know breaking them off for firewood and the, and it seemed like behind this um brush pile there's a you know it was kind of next to this little creek and then along the creek it was like there's a trail going up there but you know i don't know if this pile was blocking the trail or what but you know i i snapped the limbs and they go snap and you could hear this as the snap kind of reverberated up through the forest up in that direction along the trail and I just, I thought that was kind of a neat noise. So I just kept doing it. And, you know, pretty soon I had a decent pile of, of decent sized limbs. And then we found some other <laughs> bigger logs we could use for the fire and stuff. And so, um, yeah, so anyways, you know, we we're sitting around drinking and stuff and having a good time and had the fire going and stuff like that. And I remember going up to go use the restroom uh, in that toilet. And then when I was in there, I got a really weird feeling like there was something like right behind it or maybe even on top of it on the building. And like I got kind of this weird sense that, you know, something wanted to grab me or I don't know. It's just kind of one of them weird things. Right. But it it, it was kind of like a wasn't overwhelming, but it was a very strong feeling. And so, you know, after I was done in there, I just kind of like ran real fast out of there, ran back down to the fire and stuff. but. Um, 
I just remember kind of looking up in that area and seeing, um, you know, like, and it would basically the only light we had was the firelight. And so it was just casting light up there, but, you know, seeing like maybe something like a big, you know, again, a a big light, a light haired creature just kind of sitting down on its haunches. But the thing was, it was kind of like, the the i was kind of looking at it going you know is i was wondering if there was even something there you know but i remember seeing kind of that shape but it was almost as big as that pit toilet building you know and that building was probably like you know seven feet tall by about five foot wide or something like that i'm guessing and so um I was going, man, is, what the heck's going on there? I know I just kind of blew it off. And then pretty soon my, my buddies, you know, they went to, they went to go to bed and stuff and I wasn't even tired, man. It was the weirdest thing. And, um, um, so I just was kind of like kept drinking a little bit and smoking a little bit and stuff like that. And I was just kind of like stomping around throwing wood on the fire and stuff. And then, it was really weird because I, I started getting like the inclination, like <laughs> this is, this is really weird and it's kind of funny, but I started getting this inclination. Like I just need to throw the tent with my buddies in it, in the lake. Like, no, I could do that. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, they're normal sized guys, you know, they're 150, 180 pounds, two of them in the tent with all their stuff. Like no human could throw the, throw them in there, but, for whatever reason, I started, I started, uh, just going, Oh yeah, you know, I could definitely do that. You know, for what it was really weird. Another thing was I started like feeling like I was very strong too, at the time, you know, like, like my body was getting pumped up, like, Oh yeah, you know, well we could definitely do it. Cause you know, I don't know. It's the weirdest thing, but, and then, and then, you know, these thoughts were kind of going through my head for a while. And then um, I was thinking, oh, man, I can't do that. You know, my buddy's got a gun there. He'll shoot me. And then right when I thought the word gun and thought about him having it, that whole idea, the whole um, the whole inclination to do that kind of went, kind of went away from me. And then I was kind of like almost back to my old self, if that makes sense. And I was going, what the heck is going on here, you know? It's a very weird thing. I don't know if stuff like that happens out in the woods or so, something, but just a very weird and strange thing. And, you know, after that, you know, I had just, I didn't bring a tent with me on that trip. I just threw my sleeping bag under a tree. So I was like, man, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I just went and climbed in my sleeping bag and, and stuff like that. But, um, I mean, I was laying in there and then, uh, I don't know if I, I might've heard a very slight noise, like right outside my sleeping bag. And I was kind of like, had the mental picture of a big foot sitting there with the white hair, you know? And I, I, I was like going, Oh, should, you know, is there something there? Or is it just my imagination or what's going on? And, and I was, I was like, man, I just reach out and touch it. I was like, eh, I don't know. I, didn't, <laughs> I ended up not, not doing that, but. I don't know. The whole thing was very weird, but, um, yeah, it's, I don't know what else to say with that one. So that's, that's, that man, that's an interesting one. It, that area, it looks like I'm looking it up on a map right now. So it's between like Matt Rainier and then Gifford Pinchot National Forest, Mount Adams, kind of like in the middle there is where it looks, pack, yep. looks like Packwood is, but so and it sounds like you just you got a really quick look at the the rock troll faces. Um when when you say rock yeah. troll, you know, just I'm trying to get a mental image in my head as well. So are when you mm-hmm. picture that, are you you know, kind of like a Lord of the Rings type thing or like Harry Potter or like what when you try to say rock troll, like is there something similar that you've seen in a movie or a TV show? Yeah, it's kind of like, um, so it might be the Lord of the Rings trolls or something like that. 
I'm not 100% sure, but the way I remember him looking was they had very kind of beady eyes, and um, the eyes were kind of, the eyes were not big and round. They were kind of more like, like they're squinting. And then it had kind of smallish cheekbones, but the lower jaw and the jowls were very large, mm. you know, and very large and very rounded. And the, and the mouth kind of had like, um, like how a monkey is or a chimpanzee is kind of the lips kind of stick out a little bit. Sure. Stuff like, so it's like the, that's, that's kind of what I mean by it. And they just, the thing was, it was, I just remember the look on it, on their faces just being like, kind of like very menacing. I don't know if they meant to, if they meant to put, put that off. I mean, I didn't really get the sense that I was in danger, but it was, um, or maybe that's just the way that they looked, you know, they might've had RBF or something, but, um, <laughs> right. As, as some of us do, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> myself included, um, d- did you notice uh, anything? Do you remember anything about um, how the the hair looked, uh, length of it? You said it was uh, it was kind of a, a white uh, white hair, but do you could you see like maybe if it was long hair, short hair, anything like that? Um, it, I don't think it was short hair. It was. You know, maybe um, if you think of like a golden retriever or something like that, Mm. you know, maybe, I don't know, what would that be? Four or five inches in length? Sure. I mean, I didn't get a real, I mean, the thing was once, once I kind of picked up that there was something up there and they had weird looking faces, I didn't really want to look at them anymore. And so I just kind of have a, as far as seeing what was there, it was just kind of like a quick glance, but. I mean, I had enough to see that it was hair and I think it was longer hair. I don't think it was like super short, um, in that regard. Sure. Why was it that you, you didn't want to look for an extended period of time? Do you think? Uh, just the, the part of it was cause again, you're, I mean, I'm just, I'm just hiking, dude. I'm going on a nice camping trip. And then you hear, you hear a noise and you look up and you go, Oh, look at those menacing looking rock troll things with white hair. Oh, you know, <laughs> I don't want to, you know, I was like, uh, just, I didn't want to look. I didn't, I almost didn't even want to, you know, it's just kind of like, okay, I'm not seeing that, you know, something kind of like that, you know? And I'm, I mean, the other thing too, is we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, if, if you look at something and then, Oh, it's really there. And okay, now what do I do? You know, you know, I got a mile or two to go back to the car and then my buddies are up there. And then of course they're not going to believe what I saw and all this other stuff. So, Oh, sure. Yeah. It was like, you know, at at that time, that's the way I approached it. I approach it a little bit differently now, but, um, you know, kind of at that time I was, I don't know if you could say I was freaked out, but I just, I just wasn't sure I wanted to kind of be seeing that at the time. Yeah. You know, it almost sounds like you were not ready to live in a world where those things exist. So you not looking for a long period of time, you're like, you know what? I'm just going to move on. Yeah. I That's mean, what I get. Might, you know, something like that. I mean, the thing was, I mean, I saw those other, that other thing uh, as a younger person too, but, you know, I guess, I guess once you start hearing other people talk about it, it's kind of more, you kind of get more comfortable with the idea. Well, absolutely. Did you, you know, it was a quick look, but did you notice anything about the teeth of the, the creatures at all? Did, were you able to see any teeth involved or? You know, I almost want to say that like they might've had teeth sticking out from between their lips, but man, I, it's, I might not have had a good enough look to say that. For, totally get for, it. With, for, to be completely definitive. Man, that's that's wild. That it, it, man, it feels like there is someone out there that has. I I would, I would wager there's someone listening to this that has gone hiking in the same area, and can mm-hmm. be like, dude, I've seen them too. I, I almost, I, I'm just. 
I know someone, someone's going to reach out. I got a feeling. Um, I mean, they've got to, if there's something like that in that area, someone else has had to have seen them too, but just, that is a mm-hmm. wild, wild, uh, anecdote story there. Kel. Yeah. Yeah. Let's continue with, uh, you have, I'm looking at, you were kind enough to kind of give a, give me a roadmap of where we're going, which is an awesome, but, uh, you've got, uh, another Washington thing that happened before we go to a different mm-hmm. part of the U S. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in fact, you, uh, I have another story that I, didn't think of when I was writing this stuff down. Do you mind oh, if I talk about that go one? Go right after ahead. This one too? I go right ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this one, I'm guessing uh, the next one I was in uh, by Kalama, Washington. I think I was around 33 or something like that. And at that time, I was kind of like more comfortable with uh, the idea of, of, you know, these type of creatures being out there and, and stuff like that. And I think I was, um, listening to some of the podcasts that were around back in that time, you know, in the 2013, 2014 timeframe. Um, anyway, so, I mean, in this, at this time, I drove out to the end of Kalama River Road and, and you get out there and um, I think it was Kalama River Road. I don't know, there, there's um, a couple of roads that run along rivers. There's like five rivers in the area. So it was either Klamour river road or out at the end of Kelso drive. But I think it was Klamour river road. Um, anyway, so I get out there and then there's a gate. And so I just parked down there and I, I had my video camera and stuff and I walk out there, you know, I don't, and it, it was kind of a light rain. And, you know, when you're from Washington, you can walk around in the rain. It doesn't really bother you. Um, so I, was, I walked out there, you know, probably about 300 yards or something, and I didn't really hear nothing or see nothing. I was kind of just trying to videotape and looking under the trees and stuff with the camera and whatever. So um, anyway, so I get back to the car and I'm driving out and then I notice, you know, as I'm driving out, there's a, a little basically um, like a, a long limb that was laying across the ground or across the road. Excuse me. Um, so I drove over it and I was like, you know what? I don't remember that being there when I drove in, you know? And so I stopped and I, and I walked up to it and I was looking at it and the tip of it was stuck into the hill. Um, you know, and then, the rest of it was laying across the road, but it was underneath of a fern. And so had it fallen from above, it would be laying on top of the fern. It wouldn't be, you know, like dug in. Like to me, it looked like somebody or something stuck it into the ground right there to lay it across the ground. So I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, obviously I didn't see anybody do it, but it was just kind of one of them things. Um, And then, so, you know, the next story, that I, I didn't write down was, um, so I used to go up on Mill Creek, um, and go shooting up there, up on uh, Mill Creek. It's, um, uh, it ends in the logging road and it just goes up and goes on for a long time. And so there was an area up there where I'd go shooting that, um, you, it's kind of like the, the logging road goes down into a clear cut. And then the road abruptly stops because at the end of the road, there's a large marshy area. And, and, um, and so we would go up there and go shooting and stuff like that. And I just, re- I remember one time, I mean, I went up shooting up there uh, a few times and I just remember hearing this noise. So if I'm facing South, the noise was coming kind of, it was up Northeast of me and then coming down kind of closer to where we were and it was making like this like a like that type of noise or something like that and i was going whoa that's weird you know what is that and so i kind of gingerly stepped 
across the dry spots in the marsh area and kind of got out to the middle of that. And there's kind of a bunch of logs and stuff laying down on top of each other and kind of sunk down into the marsh a little bit. So I stood on there and I was looking in the direction of where it was coming from. And there was kind of like a long corridor of no trees or trees on either side. And it was like coming through there, but I didn't see anything. It was very weird. And, um, and, and the noise was getting louder and louder. And I kind of lost my nerve at the point at one point, because I could hear it getting louder. Like it was like, I should be able to see it. And I didn't see anything. And so I kind of stepped back over to the dry spot, you know, where my uh, friend was. And so I, we heard the noise come up to the edge of the marsh. And then we heard this big, like a big giant exhale. And again, we didn't see anything like it, it sounded like it should be right there. Didn't see anything. And then it was making that, that type of noise as it walked around the marsh in the trees. And, you know, I think, I think I remember hearing like the, the branches and stuff snapping and stuff as it went around. And, um, and so when I was hearing that, like I wasn't shooting at it, but I just unloaded my 45 kind of not like I was going to shoot it, but kind of down. So the bullets would go down into the marsh, you know, just, Cause I didn't know what the heck was going on. And, um, so I just did that to see if it like run off or something like that. And it, and it didn't, it kind of like went and it kind of stopped. It kind of did a semicircle around the marsh area, stopped kind of across where it would have hit the marsh and kind of made, I think another little breathing noise. And then it just continued on, uh, along that line. And then and then that that one was over. But the funny thing is, at that spot, there was a a couple of trees that made an X, um, where one was kind of standing up, you know. And then there's another tree that was kind of in the crook, where two limbs made a Y, and it was sticking, you know, in there. And so I remember it was a different uh, time. But me and another friend were up there, and I go, "You see that X? Let's go look at it." So we went over there and one of the trees that made the X was like, it wasn't from that spot. Like you could tell that it didn't, it's, it wasn't a, a tree that just broke off and leaned over and landed there. It was actually up off the ground and you couldn't tell, you couldn't see where it would have come from in the area. And as we were over there looking at the X, we couldn't see uh, I had a minivan at the time. It was a Mazda MPV. And I heard something like like when you grab a door handle and you don't open the door, but you just flick it. You know what I mean? Like if you grab the door handle hard and you pull up, but you don't open the door and the door handle falls down right. and makes that kind of thunking noise. We heard that over there at the car. I kind of looked at him and he kind of looked at me. I go, did you hear that? He was like, yeah, you know. And I was like, man, I think something just did the door. And so, you know, of course we went over there and there's nothing there. Um, <sighs> and then just real, yeah, just real quick too. So kind of in a similar area, but not at that spot, it was still up on mill Creek. One of the first times I went shooting up there, I just had my little 22 pistol. I started off with, uh, I got kind of started shooting late in it, later in life. And uh, I was just up there shooting and dude, I had, I had one of those things that people talk about where, um, you feel an immediate sense of danger. And I was, I was off by myself kind of down at the end of this little logging road. And I looked over to the trees where apparently that feeling was coming from and I didn't see anything there. And there's kind of a berm at the end of the logging road and it went downhill, but that area under the trees was very dark. And I was like, Oh man, you know, I just had this little tiny pistol. I wasn't really that good at shooting anyways. So I just got in the car and left, but that was, that was one of the, I think one of the only times I really had that inclination that, you know, it's time to leave right now. And so I did, but anyway, those are kind of the couple of funny little wood stories up there in that area. And I think I have another one later on kind of, it's a little more uh, interesting. Yeah. That's some really um, interesting stuff, especially, 
you know, there's a few different times I've heard where it's like people will hear something that sounds kind of like a car door in the woods or something like that, but it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, belong. Like there's no reason that it should. Yeah. I've I've heard that from a few people uh, in different parts of the U S and it's just very interesting, but for context, that last account that you shared it, is the is it a town called Mill Creek or I'm not overly familiar with the area but no so um if if you're looking at a map and you look at Longview Washington on a map it's kind of the armpit of Washington state you know just I'm from there so you know whatever but um <laughs> If you think of the shape of Washington and Oregon, that spot where there's that uh, like a quarter circle that the Columbia River makes between them, Longview is kind of at the apex of that quarter circle. Anyways, if you go west from Longview along Ocean Beach Highway and it goes kind of along the Columbia River, the north side of the Columbia River, you're going to pass um, a road called Mill Creek. Okay. And so then it's you, you take that road, you go north on that road, and then it that it it doesn't end, but it turns into a logging road. And then those, you know, I mean, that whole area has hundreds and hundreds of miles of logging, probably thousands of miles of logging roads, you know, in, in that Mill Creek area, but also on, you know, everywhere. I mean, very I interesting. Mean, and we were, yeah. in Longview itself, you know, we're like an hour and a half away from Mount St. Helens. So Right. You know, that that thing's covered in logging roads and trees, and I mean, there's a lot. There's still a ton of forests all over there, so you know it's perfect habitat for uh, anything that wants to live in the forest. Oh yeah, it just it blows my mind to think of the Pacific Northwest, and there's there's so many different areas where you know you could be the first, you know, or a person in a long time to have set foot in that area if you go out for far far enough it's just it's intense oh yeah i mean i and i've driven across that state many 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 times and there's areas you know especially along highway 12 going from uh, i-5 and going east or west across the state and you just drive through there and you just see valleys just full of trees <sighs> nothing but trees you know and um yeah there's, there's a lot of un- a lot of untouched area up there you know, and pretty much all the towns are just along the main arterial roads. There's not really towns that are kind of like out in the middle of nowhere there. Mm. Incredible. It's interesting. Yeah. Then you kind of go east a little bit, which is, is interesting. Yeah. So um, next one, I think I was around 34 or something like that. Um, I, I got a new job and, um, I went to Ohio for training, you know, I was in the Columbus area and, um, so I had a, I got in late on my flight, uh, excuse me. And, um, so since I got in late, um, you know, I went to the hotel and then what I wanted to do, since I'd never been there before, this is the first time I went tra- to training with this company. I wanted to go to the main campus to make sure I knew where it was. So I wouldn't get lost in the morning because, you know, um, if you're trying to get there on time in the morning, um, and if you happen to get lost or something, well, then you don't have time to find yourself. You know what I mean? But so basically my thinking was if I'm going to get lost, I'll do it while I ha- still have time you know, because I don't want to be late in the morning, if that makes sense. But anyways, um, so I drive over there, I find it and I'm just kind of, okay, there it is. So I'm heading out and then (laughs) there's a, there's a field next to the campus, you know, and it's not a super large campus. It's maybe, you know, like, uh, maybe an acre or something like that. So then next, next to that property is, was another, um, field there and i see this deer running around in there i go oh wow look at that deer you know that's kind of cool so i kind of stop the car and i roll down the window and i'm like you know kind of yelling at the deer or something like that and it's it's behaving really weird because it was like kind of running around erratically in the field but it like wanted to come over towards me like it seemed like oh it wanted to run by me but then it realized hey i don't want to be by this guy so it would like run over um 
and then so the other thing was so i was in the car on the road or on the kind of the driveway there was the field and then on the other side of the field there's a green belt and i think that's the columbus river that runs right through the middle of columbus and if you look on a map that green belt actually is unbroken from north of columbus to south of columbus i believe is how it runs and I, I ended up looking at that later. I didn't know anything about it at the time. And I'm just kind of going and going, hey, you know, that, that deer is acting weird. And then from the bushes, now, mind you, it's pitch dark in the bushes. I mean, I, I mean, you know, we're in Columbus, so, I mean, who knows who's down there. But I hear this, like a like somebody whistling for a dog, like they're going, <laughs> something like that. Like you'd say, you're like, here, boy, you know, something like that. I was going, who the heck is down in the those dang trees whistling at this deer you know what i know you know what i mean so weirdest stuff so yeah anyway i just you know i just left i didn't yeah i, I wasn't I, gonna go down there and look or nothing no but, i wouldn't i dude i'd get out of there yeah. i'm not gonna go down in the bushes when it's almost midnight and see who's whistling <laughs> No, no, thanks, dude. <laughs> I know. I mean, and the weird. I mean, I didn't see a light down there or nothing. I mean, mm. and maybe it's a homeless guy or something, you know. But I just thought it was very weird, you know. Maybe, maybe along this, maybe, maybe it had something to do with this topic. But you know, who yeah. knows, man? Whatever but, it was, you made I you did. made the right choice by not going down there. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah, I had other stuff to do at the time, but no doubt. Yeah. Anyways. You know, so, um, so actually a couple of years later, so I think that was in 2015 when I saw that deer. So I think around 2018 in the summer, I went back there for training. And by this time I was like, you know, I had all kind of Bigfoot fever and stuff like that. I was like, man, it, you know, I was kind of thinking about the stuff that happened to me earlier in life going you know, that, I think, I think that's probably what those things were, you know, maybe not necessarily the deer, but some of the other things that we're talking about tonight. So I was like, man, you know what? I just want to, I just want to go see one, you know? And so I was there training for a couple of, or I think three weeks. And so, um, I had the weekends off though. So I ended up, uh, you know, back when I was on Facebook, um, there was a, I don't know if I should say the name of the podcast, but there was a, another podcast that was pretty popular back away uh, a while ago. And the hosts kind of had nicknames that sounded like animal names. And uh, anyways, that, you can say, <laughs> I, I, I don't care. Dude. All right. It's a uh, bear and Kumbo. Oh yeah. Yeah. Foot crop, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, and, and funny enough, I learned a lot about, okay, you know, pur purportedly what the behaviors of these type of animals were, these these creatures or people, however you want to look at them. But I I put a post out on their Facebook group and I said, hey, you know, I'm in Ohio. Where should I go to look for Bigfoot? And this, this one lady says, you need to go to South Fork State Park. I go, okay. And I looked on a map and it was like two hours away from where I was, but I mean, you know, I got nothing but time during the weekend. So I was like, Hey, I'll just go down there and check it out. Right. <clears throat> and so, you know, I just, I just drive down there and I get there and, and this is actually a pretty big park. And for people that don't know, Ohio has all kind of different, they call Metro parks. Now I don't remember this one being necessarily in the Metro area, but their Metro park uh, program has parks all over the state and um, it was a pretty big park. And so I was just like, well, where am I going to go? Where am I going to go look for these guys? And so um, I just, I pulled up to a uh, little information stations. I was looking at a map and I was like, well, I want to go to a spot where there aren't a lot of people because that was most likely where they would be. Right. And so um, I go, oh, here, look at this horse trail. You know, that looks, it had kind of a big loop kind of off at the edge of the park. And it was away from the, you know, it was on the other side of the park from the fishing and the boat launch and the uh, playground for the kids and all this other type of stuff. So I, I said, oh, yeah, I'll just go up there. And so 
um, I go up and I park up there and I had my, my camcorder and stuff at the time. And, you know, I, I was pretty dumb because I wore shoes. I wore new shoes that weren't broken in. And, um, I didn't bring any water with me. It's pretty hot, but you know, I decided I'd walk this loop and it, you know, it said it was a 10 mile loop. I go, oh, I can't really be 10 miles. Right. But you know, anyways, so, um, yeah, by the way, don't do that. To anybody that's listening, but, um, so I start walking in and it's, you know, it's kind of like maybe late summer. At least there was a lot of leaves that were on the ground there. And I remember, uh, as I was walking in, there's like birds and stuff and chipmunks and there's a chipmunk running through the leaves. And so I kind of recorded him doing that. And I kind of, you know, that sound, you know, kind of made an imprint on me like, oh, okay, that, that chipmunk's pretty fast. You know, he's running through the, the leaves and you could hear the leaves moving, which indicates how fast he's moving, you know, cause it's, you know, there's really quick pitter patters anyways. So I was, I was going and I headed towards this loop, you know, and it's, it's not very far from where you park the car to where you get on the loop. And so as I kind of around the bend and I start heading one direction on the loop, I, I, you know, it was weird because I heard like this, like this drumming sound or something kind of off to my right. And I didn't really think nothing of it, you know, and maybe it's a woodpecker or something like that. Right. But it is kind of far away. I was like, oh, well, that's weird. And so I kept walking and then um, I kept passing mile markers. And by this time I realized it was a 10 mile loop and I was like, holy cow, you know, I was like four miles in and. Do I turn around? No, I'll just keep going. And they know it's getting late in the day and it's the shadows are kind of starting to get long there. I mean, I think it was at that time, it was probably like four o'clock. And so I did some quick math, you know, and figured out, well, if I walk at this pace, you know, I'll, I'll make it through the loop before it gets dark. So that was my main thing. I didn't want to be out there when it's dark. I didn't have any idea what, about the area or nothing. But unfortunately, because I was wearing, I was wearing new shoes. I started, I wore, basically wore the most of the skin off of one of my heels. And so I was like keeping pace, but I was, my heel was really hurting. I was limping a little bit and I was, you know, walking around and stuff like that. And, um, one, one thing that I did pass there that was very interesting to me, and I took a picture of it and all I'll, uh, I'll send this picture to Jeremiah and maybe he'll post it um, if he can. But it was like a, it, it was a, basically a stump that was probably, I don't know, maybe about six, seven feet tall. But between the top of the stump and the bottom where it hits the ground, it was like it was, the whole thing was splintered. Like you would, like somebody like either took it and twisted it or like, I don't know if lightning can do that to a tree or something, but it was just the weirdest thing. Just like this stump was totally splintered, right? So I was looking at that going, wow, that's kind of weird. So I took a picture of that, you know, and I kept walking and, um, and, and I would also had a selfie stick. And so I would kind of hold my uh, cell phone. I was an iPhone at the time. And I would do the, um, the FaceTime mode with the, the video recording. So it was recording the camera. That was, you know, as you look at the screen, it's the camera that's facing you. And I was using that as a back trail camera to, um, you know, record what was behind me and to kind of look, also use it as a screen so I could look and see what's behind me as I went, you know. And I remember um, I was probably at the six or seven mile mark. It was really weird because it was really warm that day and I was hot at the beginning of the hike i was hot but at that time i got some uh, chills like i was starting to feel cold which was weird because it like i said it was really it was like 88 or something when i started off and it wasn't cooling down that fast either so i thought that was kind of weird and um anyway i kept walking along and uh i'm you know i'm kind of headed towards where i started from you know but I'm on a loop, so I'm, I haven't been to this part yet. And I look down, there's a shotgun shell on there. I go, huh, that's weird, you know, because I'm in a 
I'm in a state park, you know, you're not really supposed to be shooting shotguns out there or nothing. So I see that. And then I'm, I'm kind of, I kind of go to this one area. I'm kind of walking along go around this little bend and I start hearing this drumming really loud. And it's, um, man, it was, uh, I mean, to me, it sounded like somebody taking like, um, limbs that are cut off. They're probably about as you know big around as my wrists or something like that. You know, they're probably like, you know, five inches in diameter and they're just beating on a large, uh, hollowish tree and it's going, but it's like, it's very fast and it's a perfect rhythm. And it just, and it was too loud to be a woodpecker. I was pretty sure. And I looked to where it was coming from and it was kind of at the top of this knoll. And it, it seemed to be coming from this, what looked to be the tallest tree there, but it was devoid of bark. It might've been a dead standing dead tree, but it was the tallest one there. And in uh, listening to these podcasts, I go, okay, well, if that is one of those guys, up there, I'm not going to look that direction. I'm going to look to my left because that was coming from my right. And so I was looking to my left. And the other thing I decided after listening to these shows is, you know, in, if you're walking around in the woods and you look at the colors that you see, you don't often see jet black, you know, like jet, jet black. And so that's why I started, you know, not at that time, but it, I decided before I was doing all this, okay, if, if I go out looking for these guys, I'm going to look for jet black, you know, because, because they're described as being jet black and you don't see jet black, you know, in, um, in the forest, you know, for other reasons. And so I was just kind of looking the other direction and it almost seemed like that the, the pounding was getting more frantic as I was walking along this, this trail. And of course I didn't have the camera going at that time, you know, it's, kind of silly but um you know i i was at this point i was just like okay you know it's my my foot's hurting and it's kind of getting later in the day i'm just trying to kind of hurry up and get out of there because i'm you know, in an unfamiliar area not prepared to be doing this really and all that so i'm looking to my left and i i just kind of walking along and then i kind of like there's this bush that's kind of overhanging and then there's a space underneath the bush and there's a a I see something that's jet black right there. And then the next second, that thing jumps up. And when it pops up above the bushes, it's facing away from me. And it takes two steps and it dives into the bushes like you dive into a swimming pool. And then it was completely silent. Okay. And um, I was like, what? You know, like, holy crap, you know, like, I think I like yelled at it or, you know, made just some kind of noise or something like that. Cause it was kind of, didn't startle me so much, but I, I kind of like, I mean, it was definitely one of them, man. I saw it from the, the top of the back, the back of the shoulders, the back of the head. Um, the rest of the body was obscured by the bushes, but, um, and the reason why I brought up the chipmunks uh, ahead or, you know, from the beginning of the story was because when that thing was running, he took a couple of steps in the bushes. It sounded to me like it was the same speed as those chipmunks. And yet this thing was about the same size as me. And it was it was only like 10 to 12 feet away, man. It was really close. And um, and the weird thing was um, so kind of thinking back on the incident, you know, I almost wonder if it was going to, I don't know if he's going to try and grab me or he's going to try and do something because it was almost like it was laying down facing the trail, but there was an unimpeded path from where it was to the trail. So I don't know if he's just planning on looking or what, but uh, it was really strange. And so um, I was like, holy crap, you know? And so uh, I was I was still like a mile and a half uh, to go to get to the car. And so I just kind of tried not to 
limp too much and just kind of kept going and just kind of looking back all the time. And I kind of had a weird feeling like something might've been following me, but I didn't see anything. And I just wanted to get back to the car kind of very quickly because, you know, I, I, that thing was so fast and it was fast that had I not been already looking at it, if I would have heard a noise and turned to look, I wouldn't have seen it. It was that fast. I mean, just, you know, <laughs> when you, when you hear something that's like that and you know that you're not that fast and you're not that strong, you know, you don't want to be messing around. And so I just kind of hightailed it to the car. I didn't run or nothing. I didn't want to trigger any kind of pursuit instinct if they have them or anything like that you know i just wanted to just be a nice quick pace back to the car and so i did and you know nothing happened on the way back but um after that i was looking at some of the footage i took from the back trail and um i happened to see like while i was watching the video i saw kind of a streak across there and so i, I paused the video and kind of went to the frame and um i i sent this picture to jeremiah and it it's like um it's like a a black shadow running through the forest you can see a head arms and a leg or legs but um it almost looks like it's uh translucent it's very weird i don't know um what do you think about that so, picture Jeremiah? you know it's it's a really interesting uh photo and it's it's one of those where it's like it, it's so wild cuz like I wish I had like, man, if I could see the video, that would probably, mm -hmm. that would probably show a little bit more, but it's like, you look mm -hmm. at it and you're like, oh man, you, you can kind of see it, but it's like, you know, you could also see, could be a stump, but the fact that you saw something moving and there's, there's video of that as well adds a whole different potential layer to it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I am. I probably have the video somewhere, so I can I can send them to you if you want to look through them or something like that. It's fine by me. Um, that would be cool. Yeah, it yeah. would definitely add yeah. a, another layer to that for sure. Yeah, and so real quick, so the when I there were some very interesting aspects because I got a I got a clear look at this thing, and the thing was that hair was short. It was mm. almost like a felt very, it was very interesting. And the thing was the shoulder, the trip, the trape, the trapezius muscles, the traps, like, like the traps went from the, almost from the shoulder up, up to the back of the head. Like there was no, you know how a human has an L a normal human. They don't work out all the time. Right. They have an L right there where their neck meets their shoulder. This guy didn't have that. It was a, inverted v to, up to the back of his head he did not have that l his traps filled that whole gap in there and um and and the hair was kind of like it was black but once he got out in the light it was kind of like a little shiny you know like if it had a little bit of oil or something on it maybe but um and the, i i estimate the weight to maybe be in the 250 pound range that's i, I that's about what i weigh and it was a little bit downhill for me, but it looked to be like its head was at the same level as my head. So, you know, it might have been between six and a half to seven feet tall, something like that, depending on how quick that hill descended. Um, but it was definitely got a clear look at it. And um, I mean, if there's if there's a dude in a suit laying there waiting for somebody to just walk by where nobody goes, I mean, <laughs> it's and the other thing was the, the the speed that that thing moved, you know, the speed with which it moved was so fast, man. And like I said, it, it sounded like a chipmunk running in those leaves. So, and then, you know, it dove into the bushes, man, just the weirdest thing. And the other interesting thing is that, so you're taking this 10 mile loop. So you're in a part of the park, you were saying that is away from potentially the normal mm -hmm. tourist type type things you're out there you had to hike a while to get out on this trail and so that kind of you know gives uh, another part to it too you probably didn't have yes, just sir. a random dude <laughs> hanging out by the side of a trail just waiting it's kind of weird i know 
Well, and this was uh, basically a horse trail is what it was marked as. So uh, I think it was basically people would, you know, maybe go on guided horse uh, rides around that or something like that. I mean, yeah, but that was, uh, a, I think that was pretty much the only clear sighting I had when I was an adult so far. It may have uh, been trying to snag a horse, who knows, but did you go over to the part where, you know, you said it was laying on the ground, then got up real quick, ran away. It, it sounded like you, you probably uh, didn't go over to look at that area. It sounded like you were pretty much just moving on. Yeah, man. Um, I, I, I just wanted to get out of there. Yeah, sure. I didn't, I mean, the, the drumming and stuff up the hill kind of sounded a little bit frantic. That thing seemed like it was kind of like it didn't want to, you know, it didn't want to be there. And from what I saw, you know, it, you know, I couldn't tangle with that thing and, and do anything to it, I'm sure. And so, um, yeah, I just wanted to ski daddle, you know, and I, I kind of, I wasn't like scared or nothing per se, but, I had that feeling in my um, stomach where it's a very uneasy feeling. And if you let it get out of hand, it can turn into full blown fear. You know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. I kind of, yeah, I kind of had that feeling. I was like, I didn't, I wanted to kind of control that. And I wanted to just move away quickly and just get to the car and just go back, you know, Mm -hmm. and make sure I could get out of there and everything, everything would turn out well for me. Yeah. Sometimes you just, you know, you you have to make the call to do, uh, the right thing to make sure you're safe in that situation. So totally, totally get it. Yeah. But you know, you're in the place in Ohio where if squatchy stuff is going to happen, it's going to be in, in Salt Fork state park for sure. As listeners, you know, have heard, I've done a few, uh, interviews with with individuals that have had things happen in Salt Fork or talked about it, but that's pretty really? cool, man. That's oh yeah, uh, I've talked to an uh, individual who's the naturalist at Salt Fork, uh, John Hickenbottom, and he he shared quite a few uh, uh, Bigfoot interactions that have happened in the park. So that's a, that's a fun one. If uh, well, no. you, you go back and listen to that, it's a fun chat. Um, yeah, I'm gonna absolutely. It, then after that, it looks like you made your you made your way back to Washington again. Yeah, so um, I, I w- at the time I was still living in Washington, and I was just in Ohio for training, and so you know I, I lived and worked in Washington, and so um, this is another Mill Creek area story, and um, me and a, <laughs> I can't remember whose idea it was, but I either called a buddy up or he called me up, and he was like, "Hey, let's go out camping." You know, and, you know, I kind of like doing spur of the moment stuff like that. And, you know, I mean, it didn't matter that it was kind of stormy out, you know, and it was raining and real foggy. You know, I mean, he had a he had a tent and stuff and, you know, I had my van and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, it it didn't really bother us. And so we we headed up and it was like, well, where are we going to go? Let's go up to Mill Creek, go find somewhere to camp under the trees. Cause once you get under the trees, even if it's stormy, the wind just blows over the top of them and and kind of protected from the storm and stuff like that. But so anyway, we start driving up there, you know, I think we left my house at like 10 PM or something like that, you know, so already pretty late. So we, we head up, we go up Mill Creek and then I kind of drive, just keep driving up there. And we get to, I think this must have been in the fall, um, probably like the either fall of 2018. So, yeah, it must have been fall of 2018. Anyway, so we're driving up there, and then I go around a bend, and there's a sheet of ice on the logging road. And then on the right-hand side, it's uphill. On the left-hand side, is a sheer cliff. And so I drive across that, and it's, it's cars, it's that Mazda MPV. It's a four-wheel drive, but... I mean, once you, it was a sheet of ice, it started like sliding towards the cliff and I was like, holy cow. So I just got across that. And then we turned around as fast as, you know, as, as soon as we could on that, you know, one lane logging road. Then we drove back across that sheet very gingerly. And then, um, you know, kind of, you know, maybe a quarter mile before that sheet, there was a 
shoulder on the side of the logging road that was kind of, you know, the the logging roads will kind of go in the open and they'll kind of pass under some trees and they'll go in the open again. So this was in a spot where the road was under some trees. And so we're like, well, let's just park here. We'll pitch a tent on the shoulder, you know. So we did that. Um, just kind of hanging out, drinking a couple beers, stuff like that. You know, he set up the tent. I had um, the back of the van um, had a lift gate on it. You know, it it's, uh, um, swings out and it'll it stays up and so you can stand under there and stuff and and i remember it being kind of um drizzly you know there's all types of different rain in washington but um so this rain was it's not really drops falling on you but if you stand out in it you're going to get wet it's kind of like a, a heavy mist falling out of the sky and there was still some wind and stuff blowing over the trees and everything and so we we're kind of hanging out and stuff like that and it was getting late and everything and and i still had the lift gate up and we tied a, a tarp from the lift gate to the one tree that was kind of on the um shoulder next to the tent so that would go over the tent keep some of that rain off and stuff like that and so since the lift gate was open the lights were on in the van and since i replaced everything with leds we could just let it run all night it wouldn't run the battery down or nothing and so, um, you know, we just crawl in the tent, we're laying there, listening to the wind and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm just trying to go to sleep. And he's he's laying there in the, next to me in the tent. He's trying to go to sleep. And then, of course, you know, I mean, up, up the hill and then kind of probably out to the west a little ways, I start hearing these noises and it sounds like murmuring and <laughs> it's the murmur has a, it, it's different pitches so it's like and it's almost like if you had a daddy a mommy and a kid all kind of talking to each other as they're walking along this hillside under the trees you know and i was just listening to that and i kind of poked him i said hey do you hear that he goes yeah I, go, I think that's bigfoot or something you know and i don't i don't remember if he said anything or not but i was just listening to it and um you know it it was it kind of went you know kind of walked along the hillside above us out I mean, I'm going to estimate maybe 40 or 50 yards away. It wasn't super close, but close enough where we could hear it over the wind noise and stuff. And then after it had passed, I was just kind of laying there. And then all of a sudden, right at the front of the tent, you could hear a big footstep stomp in the gravel. Uh, the shoulder, you know, the whole shoulder was gravel because it was a logging road. Here, stomp in the gravel. And there was light from the van um, shining across there. So the whole front of the tent was lit up, but I didn't see any shadows or anything. So that was kind of weird. Um, yeah, so then that was pretty much the end of that. I mean, that stomp was the last thing I heard and just kind of another kind of weird occurrence out in the woods. And I mean, I don't go out in the woods a whole lot, but... I don't know if it's because I just pay attention or what, but it just kind of seems like, you know, this this type of stuff. I just notice it happening or something. How how far away from uh, civilization would you estimate you were um, at the area where you were kind of hearing the voices? Well, I'm. I mean, probably took an hour to get there from town. Wow. So we yeah we'd go out. We'd go out Ocean Beach Highway to Mill Creek. That's probably a good 25, 30 minutes or so, I guess. And then probably another half hour up up through up the Mill Creek Road, then onto the logging road, and you just kind of drive out there. So yeah, and again, dude, it was I mean, it was a stormy night, man. I couldn't I know we were dumb enough to be out there in it, but we weren't walking around or nothing. We're kind of holed up and stuff like that. But it sounded to me like, yeah, like <laughs> 
a daddy, a mommy, and a kid walking across there and just kind of heard a murmur. Of course, you couldn't make out any words or anything, but. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Have you ever heard anything that is even come close to what you heard that night, like anywhere else? Not really. Wow. I mean, you know, I've heard the, I think it was Ron Moorhead samurai chatter and stuff like that, but yep. it wasn't really like that. It was kind of more how I was trying to imitate it. Just kind of like a, like a, sure. you know, but it was, it was kind of broken up. Like they were having a conversation, you know, it wasn't just the same, the same uh, noises with the same cadence, you know, it's like if you heard somebody speaking a language you didn't know, you could tell that they were saying different words, even if you didn't know what the words were. And, you know, you could kind of hear the tone of voice and stuff like that. If that makes sense. Yeah. Oh man. Um, that, that is weird, man. Hmm. The yeah. whole area <laughs> is just, yeah, there's something going on there. Just, uh, North of the Columbia and then Longview yep. and all this, uh, that whole, that whole region, man, this stuff going on for sure. Oof. I don't know if I'd go go back in those woods after after hearing that to that area, man. Did you ever go back to that area again after that? Oh yeah. In fact, um I told that story to a, another friend of mine and um he was interested. He he was real interested in the topic. So I took him back there during the day and you know, this was months later. And we walked up to the top of that hill because I wanted to see how high up it went and stuff like that. Hmm. And we walked along that ridge line and stuff like that. And um, I'm guessing, you know, probably from the road to the top of the hill was maybe like 80 yards, something like that. It wasn't a super long way. Wow. Hmm. Um, yeah, but it was, you know, it was interesting. And you could kind of see, you know, where somebody could kind of walk along the front of the hill and not kind of run into anything because, you know, the trees are kind of like spread out and stuff like that there. Okay, sure. Wow. Wild stuff. And then yeah, man. you move out to South Dakota, correct? Yes, sir. Man. Yeah, so this one, this is just kind of a, you know, kind of one of them things, but you know, it was a couple of years ago, um, back in the fall of 2021, we were living in a camper. We're kind of, uh, we're in, we live in Hermosa, South Dakota, but at the time we were living in a camper, um, at a friend's place. And, um, I mean, I used to travel a lot. So some, you know, I would, I would drive from South Dakota to Kentucky or South Dakota to Ohio or, South Dakota to Arkansas. And so a lot of times I get home real late at night, you know, when I drive back and, and so one of these nights I just was, I drove home, I got, got to the camper or trailer and, you know, just kind of settled in, getting ready to lay down and go to sleep. And, uh, I didn't hear any other, any noises or anything, but I heard those big wham on the side of the trailer, like on my side of the bed kind of up on the top of the wall. Like if you're standing inside of the camper, it was up at the top of the wall, you know, on the, I mean, they're, you know, six and a half feet inside. And then that trailer is probably three and a half feet tall off the ground. So that's probably between eight and nine feet up off the ground, you know, and it was so loud. I mean, I heard it because I was still awake, but it didn't wake up my wife who was next to me or my kids or anything or down at the other end of the trailer. But I mean, it was loud, man. I thought for sure it put a dent in the wall. But um, the next day I went and looked and uh, there was nothing there. And uh, uh, funny enough, the neighbor the neighbor who lived across the dirt road that we would take to get in there, he, had his, he made a big plywood cutout of Bigfoot and painted it black and has a, a reflector where the eye goes and uses it as kind of a lawn decoration. So... I never really talked to him about that, but I, I wonder if, you know, maybe he might've seen something there or something. He's trying to, um, you know, let it be known that he knows about them or something. Yeah. You know, I always yeah. wonder when you, when you drive past those guys that have the, 
the fl- the Bigfoot flag or the Bigfoot cutout. And, you know, you always wonder uh, what made them put that up there. Maybe it was just finding Bigfoot when they watched it. But when you look to see if there was a dent, did you notice if there was any uh, weird material where the dent should have uh, been or anything like that? Not in particular. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, just one of the things. And uh, I mean, it, you know, it sounded like if it was a hand doing it, that it would have been, you know, 10 inches in across or something like that. It was mm. a big noise. And, and so, but yeah, there was no dent or anything there. So that was a, a weird one there. And then, um, yeah. And so kind of my last story for the night, I know it's been going on a long time. So, uh, but it was just uh, a few weeks ago, I was uh, up camping in Custer State Park. I just kind of pack a bag, put a tent in the bag and just kind of walk up there, go hike up in the, on the hill somewhere and pitch the tent, you know, and hang out there for the night and go home. Well, so this night I went up, you know, the night in particular, I went up there Pitched a tent, you know, was hanging out up there, ate some dinner, climbed in there, just kind of laying down, listening to the sounds of the forest and stuff up there. And, um, and, um, I mean, it was, I can't remember if it woke me up or not. And I don't recall exactly what time it was, but. I started hearing this noise outside the tent and it sounded like it was 10 to 12 feet away. Not very far, not very far away at all. And it sounded like either rocks being clacked together or something like dense metal being clacked together. I don't, it was kind of a really weird noise and it, it was, it was happening so fast. Like it, like I say that it was kind of like a, the rate of a machine gun, like a, like that but like the cadence didn't change and every once in a while it would stop and then start back up again and this went on for like 35 40 minutes and i ended up recording some of it um just to just to have to show people or to have them listen and stuff like that but it's just the weirdest noise and and i don't know if an insect or something like that can make that noise but to me and granted it was at night so sounds sound louder but to me it sounded louder than what an insect could make um you know i know i don't think we really have cicadas around here um and it wasn't like that rattling type of noise like a cicada would make but i mean it was a very weird noise and it went on for so long. And I mean, while it was going on, I just kind of was just listening to it. And then I just started talking to whatever was making that noise and stuff. And I mean, it, it ended up going on. Yeah. For about 35, 40 minutes. So if, if anybody knows what that noise was, you know, it, it didn't, I don't know if it necessarily has to be anything, uh, encrypted related or whatever, but I'd never heard a noise like that before. And um, to me, it sounded like, again, like things being hit together. And so um, that's why I think it might be, it might be crypto related. I don't know. That's very interesting. It'd be interesting if someone has maybe an idea they can put in the comments on YouTube, something of that nature. And uh, yeah, it might be interesting to to hear that as well. But uh, man, Kel, you were not, Kid, you've had some really interesting <laughs> things happen over the years, and you've been in some interesting places when they've occurred. And this will be great because this is a type of episode where uh, it will jog people's memories of things that they've probably forgotten uh, in different mm-hmm. areas. So I'm so happy that you reached out to me and we were able to chat and man, I'm going to be thinking about the, uh, the rock troll faces for a while, dude. Uh, it's got it. <laughs> it feels like there's more to that story that someone else could fill in. We'll see if, uh, if perhaps oh, yeah. something that comes up, but man, uh, 
such such a fun chat. Please keep me in mind if if anything else does come across your path in the future. But it has been a uh, real fun time chatting tonight, Kel. Yes, sir. Yeah, you betcha. Yeah, thanks. It's been uh, been fun telling these stories, and you know, I've only really told them to my children and stuff like that. So it's you know, I hope I hope other people can kind of get enjoyment out of it, or you know, maybe it'll be cathartic for them if they had similar things happen. Absolutely. Well, you have a great night, sir. All right. You too. Thank you. Here at Bigfoot Society, our goal is to provide a platform for those that have encountered Bigfoot to share their encounter in a safe and respected environment. But we need to hear your story. If you've experienced something that you just can't explain, please send me an email at BigfootSociety at gmail.com. Then we can start the conversation. I know a lot of you have not shared your encounter at all. It's been 20 years, and it's time that you get this off your chest, and then you can get some well-deserved rest, because I know you haven't been sleeping. I understand what you're going through, and I appreciate every one of you listening. <laughs>